Welcome everyone to another live photo critique. If you would like to be a part of the next critique, I'm actually flying to Los Angeles tomorrow to film a project with Mike Kelly. So he will be a guest judge on the next one. Uh, as you guys know, he is a uh, world renowned architectural photographer and he is the guy who kind of put light painting on the map. So he would go into uh, incredible homes and using a single strobe pop lights all over the room or the exterior of the house and then composite images together with natural light, lights that were built into the house and then all these flash pops. Uh, recently he's gone back to the basics. He's been shooting more natural light and so for the next critique we want to see your natural light architectural pictures. You can always go to fstoppers.com slash contests uh, and I've put the link to the uh, uh, to that in the description below. And the tutorials that you can win are uh, on fstoppers.com slash store, also in the description below. If you happen to be watching this live on fstoppers.com, come on over to YouTube, join the, uh, the crap show that will be the live comments. Let's go ahead and get to this critique. Shockingly, this is the highest rated image. And let me also say, every time we do a, uh, a photo critique, it's kind of this running joke. There's always a bunch of people that complain that people are rating their photos unfairly and they get their feelings hurt and they feel like people are trying to sabotage them so that they can get the highest rated image and win the free tutorial. I always tell people, listen, if sabotaging is going on, everyone is being sabotaged equally and the best image or close to the best image always reaches the top. It's always the best images that are like the highest rated of each critique. Uh, so don't worry about it. But for the next critique, I have decided, people said they wanted this, to no longer do, at least for the next critique, the highest rated image getting a free tutorial. So I'm just gonna let Mike Kelly choose two images to get free tutorials. Um, this is the highest rated image. And for one of the first times ever, I've like, I feel like a mistake has been made. Uh, no offense to this photographer. I just feel like this isn't that exciting of a photograph. Um, it's okay. It's okay. But we got some really amazing photographs in this critique. And so it's a little strange that this is the highest rated. Ah. I'm gonna rate this, I'm gonna rate this two stars. Um, again, two stars in my, in my mind is needs work before it reaches your portfolio. Depending on your portfolio, obviously this could make your portfolio, but I just feel like unless your portfolio is very like modern fine art type photography, I just, I'm having trouble thinking of a portfolio of other images that would kind of fit with this. If this is the type of photography that you're taking all the time, then yes, it makes sense. But uh, I, I don't know. I, we're about to see some other incredible top-down photography, some of it taken by drones, like I assume this was, uh, that, that really stands out to me. This one just doesn't. Let me see who took this. Um, this photograph was taken by, gosh, these names, Graham Honholter. And as always, guys, you can go over to fstoppers.com slash contest and see all of the images or the submissions, uh, you know, that have been selected for this at that link. Um, and he says this was taken in London, and this was a carpet, part of an installation by Danish art collector Superflex. So I guess it's just people sitting on a carpet. I don't really know any more to the story than that. I don't hate it. Maybe two stars is rough, but uh, I don't know. The highest rated image of the critique, I don't get it, but congratulations, you want a free tutorial. Send me a message on fstoppers.com. Let me know what you want and you will get it. Next up, now see this I can get behind. 
Let me go full screen so you guys can see it a little bit better. There's a guy right in the middle of this pool down here, which really brings this image together, in my opinion. I love the waves crashing on the right with the uh, calm water that this guy is laying in. And then the color and the clarity of the water is so beautiful. And you've got those orange tones of the rocks on the left with the teal and the water. It's just, I would imagine some post-processing work has been done to this to get the colors like this, but gosh, it looks beautiful. Let me see who took this. This image was taken by Ali Al Salaman. I'm sure I am butchering all of these names. Mike Kelly's literally, literally FaceTiming me right now. Mike, I'm live on the internet right now talking about you. Oh, lucky <laughs> me. Um, did you, do you want me to? Do you want to call me back when you're done? I, I should probably do that. Yeah, you, sh you should uh, come on YouTube and watch me live talk about you. Actually, to be honest, I'm done talking about you. I've already talked about you. But uh, There's not much left to talk about. You're going to be, you're gonna be uh, in the next critique when I'm in L.A. Uh, and we're going to be critiquing natural light architecture photography. All right. We'd love to hear it. Uh, give me a call when you're all set. See you, man. Uh, this image, what do I rate it? I'm going four stars on this. I think this is beautiful. I think the guy in the pool, I was going to say makes this shot, but I don't think that's true. I think this shot is beautiful with or without the guy. And depending on what you're gonna do with the image, you might want it without the guy. But I love that the person just kind of shows the scale of everything. I think it's beautiful. I love this shot. Well done, Ali. Next up. Let me see where this image was taken. It kind of looks similar to some buildings in Hong Kong when I was there. This image was taken by Gary Cummins. Oh, a shot of an apartment complex in Hong Kong. This photo made it into National Geographic. That was a crazy time. Very cool. This image, I, I'm struggling to figure out how I want to rate it. With the last shot here, it's just a beautiful image, right? I feel like it could be used in National Geographic or it could be hung on someone's wall or it could be in an art book. It could be in anyone's portfolio. There's just unlimited things to do with this image. Whereas with this image, it's cool, but the subject matter, you know, like tightly grouped I would say relatively ugly buildings, um, pushes it out of the realm of fine art in my mind. It feels much more photojournalistic, National Geographic, like look at the way this city is built type photo, whereas this image is more like look at this incredible, beautiful nature. So it makes me want to rate this one a little bit more harshly. Um, Again, just because what other images is this going to supplement in your portfolio? Does this flow with the rest of the images in your portfolio? And if you are a National Geographic photographer and you're constantly shooting like people and cities and the way people live and stuff like that, I think it flows perfectly. But if you're the type of photographer that has beautiful images in your portfolio, then I don't think it matches as well. I'm gonna rate this three stars. I think it's a cool image. I have an image very similar to this that I took in Hong Kong at another building uh, with a drone, and I got yelled at for using my drone, uh, as I probably should have. Um, yeah, cool image. Let me see what you guys are saying about this on the live stream here. Uh, Don gives us four stars. I assume he's talking about this. Guys, go ahead and um, 
write, like as I'm voting, throw your numbers up in the live comments as well, and uh, we'll see if we are on the same page or not. Let's get to the next image. Now this one, I'll go full screen so you can see here. This one stood out to me because I was a wedding photographer for, how many years was I a wedding photographer? Probably like 12 or 15 years I was a wedding photographer. And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the viral videos of the wedding party on the floating dock and then the floating docks collapse and stuff under everyone's weight. That almost happened to me once. And so when I see this photograph, it brings me a lot of anxiety because I just, I remember the wedding ceremony had just ended and I don't know whose idea it was. Maybe it wasn't my idea, but they were like, let's do a shot on the dock that's right next to where the ceremony was. And I'm like, cool, no problem. And they all get on this thing and one side just dips under the water and Oh my gosh, even if it wasn't my idea, as a photographer, it is my fault because I'm the one who's taking the picture and I'm telling people what to do. And so when I see this image, I'm like, oh gosh, I, I, don't, I don't like doc pictures with wedding parties. It's just too much at risk. But I feel like this was a successful image. Oh, and the other bit of anxiety that this image drums up for me is I was once asked, this is when like drone photography was just getting started. Um, and I had a drone when no one else had one. And this wedding photographer told me to come to his wedding and like get drone video of the bride walking, or he said, get drone footage at this wedding. And I was like, okay, I'll come help you out. And then I get there and he's like, I want you to put the drone up during the ceremony. And I'm like, no, 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 like I, I can't. I don't wanna be that guy. I don't wanna be the buzzy guy during the ceremony. And uh, he, I don't wanna say he forces me to do it, but he's like, it's no problem. Like he'll be back away just when the bride's coming down the aisle. So I put this thing up and it, it's making chainsaw noise. It is just horrible. I feel horrible that I am the one doing this. And everyone's looking at me and the drone rather than the bride. So I put it down and then I realized that I didn't even get the shot. And so I just like, I hate drones at weddings and I hate docks, but I feel like this photographer did a great job. Pulling the drone out for pose pictures after the ceremony would be totally fine. And then maybe this dock is big enough and safe enough that they're not gonna fall into the water. So well done photographer on this one. Um, what do I rate it? Maybe three stars. You know what I would tell you to do? And this would be very, very easy to do. Change the color of that green water. Make it blue. And that makes it so much more beautiful. You can go into the, uh, is it the HLS panel in Photoshop and just kind of grab the greens and just drag them. Um, and you can make that a really beautiful teal color, kind of like this. And I think it's going to make the image look so much nicer. But great posing. I mean, good bit of work done on this to, uh, to get everybody posed in a similar way. <laughs> Except one girl down here for some reason did the uh, did the wrong arm, <laughs> but uh, everyone else very symmetrical, well done, cool shot. And I'm I'm also I'm always a little bit more lenient with wedding photography, maybe because I was a wedding photographer, but also because with most other types of photography you can work on it as long as you want to, you know, you could hire professional models and if it doesn't work out right now, you wait for a few hours and shoot it in another light or you come back another day. But with wedding photography, you just have to shoot with whatever you have right there. And so I just always assume these are real people. It's not like they hired a team of 12 people to uh, show up just for this shot. I would imagine this is a real wedding. So uh, well done. Don gives us 2.5 stars. 
He says, I just happened to be on one of those docks when the side collapsed. I saved, I saved from falling into the water by a whisker. Lots of guys did. Yeah, it's horrifying. Um, don't, don't let big groups of people go on docks for photos. It's not worth the risk. Next up, let's go full screen again. Let me check out who shot the last photograph real quick. This was take, the last photograph of the wedding party was taken by Alan Walgamut. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. Um, he says, I always try to find a new perspective for locations where I shoot regularly. Getting a drone allowed me to see this dock that I've shot at for decades in a whole new way and get a fun, unique group shot of the wedding party. Cool. This next shot here, once again with a person that I, I feel like really makes the shot, getting to see the scale of the waves and everything um, with this surfer is awesome. This was taken by Merrick Stefik, and he says he took this photo in Bali. I recently talked to somebody who was like, you got to go to Bali. Bali is amazing. Your money will go so far there. You can live like a king. The water is amazing. The diving's amazing. The surfing's amazing. So I definitely got to get myself out to Bali. But, uh, oh, interesting. He says he was standing on a cliff taking the pictures with a Nikon D800E and the Tamron 70 to 200. Who would have ever thought? I thought for sure this was taken with a, with a drone. I really like the editing that's been done on this photograph. There's really nice contrast going on here. I wonder if any dodging and burning has been done to get it to look like this. Do you guys see all the like dark areas in the water? I wonder if potentially we're looking through the water and maybe there's dark um, lava rock or something under there but very unique looking shadows on this image. What do you guys rate it in the live chat? Put it down below. I am gonna rate this image four stars. I really like it. I love the fact that that wave is cutting right through the center of the image. And then you have the surfer right in the middle of the bottom of the image. I think it's beautiful. I think this works in so many different portfolios. This could work as fine art. This could also work, you know, as a National Geographic type image, photojournalism type stuff. I think it's awesome. It makes me want to go to Bali even more. Let's see what people on YouTube think. Four stars. People seem to agree with me. David's giving it 3.5. Not allowed, David. Whole stars only. Next up. This, this image is so cool. It, I don't, I mean, it looks like, um, like the International Space Station or something in front of the sun. That's what it looks like. But, in case you guys can't see, let's zoom in here. That is a person and the side of a building. Javier, Salgado took this and he says a unique perspective of the bull ring of Ronda in southern Spain with a lonely man and strong shades given the image some minimalistic touch is not the oldest bull ring in the country but the diameter of the ring was 66 meters is the largest in Spain so cool and then Another detail that, uh, you know, is just so perfect are these rings where they have raked the sand down there. I mean, it's just perfectly symmetrical. I love it. And then these, these little spikes here in the shade, I feel like that is making this image so interesting as well. Without that, maybe it would look even more like, you know, the sun or something. But, I don't know, this feels like Star Wars or something. 
And I wonder how this was taken. Was this taken with a drone? He doesn't say. But, I mean, from that perspective, he's so high up, it seems like it would have to be a drone. What do you guys rate it? I... I want to give this four stars, but at the same time, I feel like it's not quite as universal as some of the others that we've just seen. Again, if you had if you had a portfolio filled with um, minimalistic drone shots, then heck yeah, like this fits perfectly in that photo series. But what type of portfolio does this really fit into? I don't know. I'm in between a three and a four. I just scolded the guy for uh, giving 3.5, and that's kind of what I've just done. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I do give it four stars. I feel like this is awesome. Let's see what everybody on YouTube says. We're getting some uh, threes and fours here as well. I think you guys are kind of on the same page as me. I think it's super cool, but man, when you start zooming out, like I'm looking at it real small on the screen here, it's impossible to tell what you're looking at. It really looks like the ISS in front of the planet or something. Pretty crazy. Next up. Now this shot was super cool. I have not yet read what is going on, so give me just a second. I'm going to read this. Sank it. Kuntal took this, and uh, he said this is one of his favorite images shot back in 2011 during Sri Krishna Janmashtami Festival, which is also known as Dahi Handi. This image won me Sony World Photography Awards. Sorry, Sony World Photography Awards in 2012 for arts and culture category. It's a joyful celebration of Lord Krishna's effort of stealing butter from matka that is suspended in the air. I don't know what the heck he's talking about here. Govindas, which is a group of enthusiastic men or men who form a human pyramid in an attempt to reach the break the pot. I'm sorry, he's kind of writing in broken English and then I am horrible at reading, period. A human pyramid in an attempt to reach the break the pot. While I went to this location in Mumbai, I saw that there were more photographers than there were, than there were Gavindas, Gavindas. Every photographer's picture is going to look the same at the end. Thinking about doing something different, I saw a spot high up where the where the ropes of the pot were tied, and I reached there. Let's see to achieve this different vantage point of the event. I I love that story, even though I had a little trouble reading it. I love when photographers see a group of a hundred photographers all taking the exact same picture, and then they just think, oh that picture's taken, I'm going to do something else. Um, and then they do, and uh, they win awards for that sort of thing. What do you guys on YouTube rate this? I'm also, I'm kind of curious what's going on here. I understand it's like people building a pyramid to, to reach something that might be hanging, but that doesn't seem to be what's going on here. Right? It doesn't seem like a pyramid. It seems like a group of people all reaching their hands in the middle. So I don't know if this happens first and then you build the pyramid after the hand. I don't know what's happening. Um, I, I guess four stars. I don't know. I think it's really cool. I love that I love that there's so much yellow in this as well. You know, I think that people with the we've got some yellow, blue, black and then like the flesh tone or whatever. It makes it a cool looking image. I mean, from a distance it's kind of hard to tell. Sorry. You guys can't even see it anymore. Um 
it's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at when it's really small. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go four stars. I'm gonna go four stars. Um, people, maybe did I never show up full screen? I'll go full screen for you guys. On YouTube, we've gotten some uh, four stars as well. I, I think that's the correct answer. I would love to see an actual pyramid of people here, and I would love to see the guy on top and everybody around the guy on top looking up towards the thing that they're reaching for and the camera be right there. That would be amazing. I feel like this maybe happened before that happened. It also doesn't seem like the camera is directly over the top of people. It feels like maybe the camera is, uh, you know, off to the side just a little bit. But uh, super cool image. Next up. Let me see who took this shot. Shariar Rakib. And he simply says it was taken with a Mavic Air, straight top-down shot of my university football field. This image really stood out to me, and I can't quite figure out why. I think there has, there's been some, I would imagine, some dodging and burning done to this that I really like. I love the, the colors and the tone of this image. I love the long shadows on the soccer field or football field. Um, I love the detail in the parking lot and the fact that there are no cars there. There's just something really beautiful about this image that looks so much better than your average top-down drone shot. So I wanted it to be in this critique. What do you guys rate this one? I... I'm once again in between a three and a four. I feel like it's very pretty. I'm not exactly sure what you'd do with it. I'm gonna go three stars. I'm gonna go three stars on this one. Let's see what... Uh the YouTubers say on this one. Oh, we've got a two. Finks 2006, rating it rough, two stars. Everyone else, three stars on that one. Hmm. I don't know, I really like it. We got more three stars coming in. This one, this was one of my favorite shots of this entire critique. Certainly not very complicated. I think this might be my favorite shot. Let's go full screen. I love the colors in this shot. I love the shadow being cast by this boat. I love the fact that you can't tell the depth of this boat, you know, how high all of those containers and everything are stacked, if it weren't for the shadow on the water. And then when you zoom in and just look, there's so much detail on this boat. The colors on the boat are awesome. The color of the water is amazing. This is the color that I want in the water on that uh, wedding party shot. It just makes everything feel so clean. I love it. And again, you know, when I keep talking about like what these images can be used for, I feel like this is another great example of an image that can be used as art. It's so pretty just the way it is. You could put this, you know, hang this in someone's house as art, or this could be in any sort of article about shipping or commerce. Um, this could be a stock photograph used for any sort of commercial use. There's just 
so many different things you can do with this image. Um, I, I don't know if I can give it five stars just because, I mean, it's, it's certainly not very complex. But uh, I love it in its simplicity. I'm going to go solid four stars, if not more. What do you guys give it? We got one four-star image, one 3.5. 3.5 is not allowed. Solid, flat images only. Four, a three. Okay, so nobody, nobody seems close to a five on this one. I don't know. Something about it I, I really, really dig. Oh, let me see who took this. This was taken by Daniel Schoen. The gargantuan dimensions of Cap San Juan make it one of the largest reefer container ships in the world, spanning over 1,000 feet. It could easily carry 200 plus Airbus A380s. What? Uh, it's taller than a 20-story building, so yeah, the thing is huge. Some additional information. Uh, German carrier, blah, 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 blah. He didn't really say how he shot it. Yeah, I'd just like to know what, what gear you use to shoot it. I would imagine a drone, but uh, super cool. Love that hard, hard sunlight. Really makes this image for me. Next up, and I believe this is the final image, I'm going to uh, give this image a free tutorial of your choice as well. Uh, let me see who took this. This was taken by Thomas Balagula. Balagula. Oh, and you know what? Thomas did not follow directions. I think I'm writing in every single critique now. You must write a description about the photograph or you are disqualified. And you know what? Thomas didn't write anything about this photograph. He is disqualified. Thomas, I'm sorry. I have to steal this from you. I'm going to give the image, give the, sorry, give the tutorial to Daniel the uh, the last shot guy. So Daniel, if you'd like a free tutorial, send me a private message on fstoppers.com. Let me know what you want. I'm still going to critique this final shot here, but I'm sorry, Thomas, you didn't follow the rules, and therefore you are disqualified from winning the free tutorial. Um, I am going to rate this image three stars. I think there are elements of this that are beautiful. I love the black tablecloth with the details of the wheat or whatever that is, um, and the silverware, and the fact that it's kind of cockeyed, you know? Usually you'd put the silverware directly on the side, but they, they've kind of made this circle around this, which I think is great. I think I want to see shadows on this image, though. I Almost every food shot you've ever seen has been lit from the top firing back towards the photographer, the light, casting shadows towards the photographer. Almost every few food shot you've ever seen is lit like that. And I think this shot could use that. One, the food in this dish is beautiful. I love the colors and everything, but because the lighting is so flat, I don't feel like you're getting to see all of the details as well as you should if you had, you know, side lighting coming in. I also want to see shadows being cast by this bowl on the table. I love the fact that you have that dark tablecloth, and so I'm not saying I want it to be, like, brightened up, but I would like to see a little bit of contrast between the shadow of this bowl and the dark tablecloth, and I think you could do that just by moving the light down just a little bit. I'm trying to figure out how this was lit. It almost feels like it was lit with an overhead softbox or something. Um, and so for that reason, it feels a little bit flat. I'm going to give this three stars. I really like this image, but I would love to see it with some directional lighting. And you can keep, you can keep that overhead 
softbox and literally just add a hard light in the back firing towards the camera, or I know the camera's overhead, but firing towards you as a photographer where you're standing, and just throw some highlights and shadows across the top of that food, and I think this image is gonna be really amazing. Let's see what the YouTubers say this one is worth. Uh, we got Mike giving it just two stars. He's rough on that one. Um, what kind of soup is it? I have no, I mean, it looks, it doesn't look like soup. It's like eggs. It's like a quiche. Eggs, broccoli, peas, spinach. Yeah, it's like a quiche type dish. All right, guys, that wraps up this critique. Once again, if you would like to be a part of the next critique, go to fstoppers.com slash contest right now. Um, if you want to figure out what tutorial you want to win, because you know for a fact you're going to be chosen as a winner for the next critique, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. Uh, again, the next critique is going to be on natural light architectural photography. Mike Kelly will be a guest judge of this next critique. We're going to film it out in LA. We're working on another tutorial with Mike. <coughs> he, uh, he's been saying for a while now that although, uh, you know, most of the education and uh, where Art Meets Architecture 1 is still good and relevant. A lot of the gear and software that he's using has been outdated. So at the moment, we're not totally sure what we're going to be doing, but he wants to do kind of like a ground-up architectural photography tutorial with all new hardware, software, workflow. He says the way he works is totally different than the way he used to work too. So we're thinking about doing that. We're also thinking about maybe not even doing like a full-blown tutorial like we have previously, but instead doing individual shots for much cheaper. So maybe it'd be like 20 or 30 bucks and you can just buy what you're interested in. So he's gonna go into a kitchen and just work on this shot. And he's gonna walk you through how he shoots it, lights it, and then edits it. And then you can just kind of buy what you're interested in. Let us know uh, what you think, if that's a good idea, bad idea. And uh, we will see you guys soon. And uh, also, in case you guys didn't know, some people were giving me crap about my Tesla short position. Um, I have I have, have had for a long time a personal YouTube channel that I've just never done anything with. Well, I made my first video ever where I talk about my Tesla short position and how I'm on the verge of losing $65,000. Thank God uh, the stock has just been plummeting the last few days. It's down 15% today. <clears throat> so I've made a little bit of money back, but I'm still way down. So uh, look me up on YouTube if you want to watch that video, and you can either root for me or root against me, but either way, it should be uh, pretty entertaining to follow along because if the stock reaches, I think, $553, I'm out, and I'm going to lose a lot of money. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.